Okay, this week in tech has been one of the biggest weeks we've had in a long time. And that is a pretty bold statement to make in its own because I feel like every week nowadays is such a big week. There's new announcements coming out, new launches that I feel like we are all a little bit desensitized to how quickly tech is moving. But I really wanted to make this tech news video because of some of these major announcements. I mean, when you think things from uh, Zuck's announcement with Meta and Super Intelligence Labs to some of the announcements that Trump made specifically around the regulations he's putting in place around AI, which is one of the most fascinating things to me because it really is going to impact how we work on a day-to-day. -day. I mean, all of these things will. To OpenAI recently releasing uh, agents and what that is going to look like, not only now, but in the future. And there are just so many fascinating things that have happened this week. Maybe we'll stretch a little bit longer than this week, but these are things that you really need to know about. So we're going to cover them today in under 10 minutes. So you not only know about them, but are able to have really in-depth conversations with people about these topics and really understand what this is going on and why it is such a big deal and how it impacts us. All right, let's get into it. First up, let's start with Meta, Meta's personal super intelligence. So this month in July, well, I guess when you watch this, it will be August, I think, which is wild. Zuckerberg announced the launch of Meta Super Intelligence Labs. And I mean, that's a big name on its own, Super Intelligence Labs. And it reflects a huge shift. So instead of just building chatbots or working on social media features, Meta is now aiming to build AI that improves itself and becomes a kind of personalized assistant. And they've pulled some heavy hitters to make this happen. I mean, for example, co-creator of ChatGPT and the former CEO of Scale AI. And they're planning to put this tech right into smart glasses, smart devices. Okay, so what is going on here? Well, Zuck says Meta will spend more than $110 billion this year, 2025 alone, on AI infrastructure. I mean, for context, that's more than most countries' GDP. But it's not all just hype. Meta's revenue was $47.5 billion last quarter. And now they have more than 3.4 billion people using their platforms daily. And this is such a big deal because Meta is really shifting, we can see, from just a social media company. I shouldn't say just, social media company is huge on its own too, but to a company that builds the next generation of computing hardware and the AI that runs on it. It also means Meta is no longer just competing with other tech companies. So why is this such a big deal? Well, for one, Meta is shifting from a social media company to a company that builds the next gen of computing hardware. I mean, for example, their AI glasses, Ray-Ban glasses, and also the AI that runs on it. I mean, it means Meta is no longer just competing with other tech companies. They are aiming to become the first true mainstream provider of both wearable AI, but then also to looking to crack AGI. I mean, Meta won't just change how we scroll through content or social media. It could essentially reshape how we access information, interact with the web, even how we remember different things. I mean, through accessing that information through smart glasses or wearables to having conversations with AGI, which opens up an entire world of its own. Mark recently just put out a statement, which I will put on screen here. You can pause this video to read it, going through what is going on, what is their plan, and it's very ambitious, very bold. Do I think that they will be able to achieve this? I, well, to be honest with you, I've never so far seen a company that is this ambitious to achieve it. So it's very exciting. And I'm, I'm very curious to hear or see even what is gonna happen in the next year from now, even the next six months. I think it's a really exciting time to, to be in tech or be passionate about tech to see where Meta will take this. And I really hope that they do, they are able to achieve what they are setting out to do because I, just the passion and intent behind it is I think really positive. Okay, coming at number two, this was not specifically this week, I believe it was last week it was announced actually, which is Trump's America's AI action plan. And so let's talk about politics and AI with this a little bit. So, well, we're not really talking about politics, but I'm gonna share, with, we're not talking about politics at all. I just wanna share with you though, what this plan entails, why it is such a big deal and really simplify it. Cause to be honest with you, when I was reading through the initial plan and regulations, it was a little bit intense. So I had to read and research it quite a bit to really kind of dumb it down, if you will, to understand just like key talking points as to what this is and why it will affect us. 
Okay, so here's what's going on. On July 23rd, the White House rolled out something called America's AI Action Plan. And it's essentially a big roadmap with a few clear goals. One is to speed up AI development, build more infrastructure data centers, that would be the second one, and three would be make sure US companies stay ahead globally. And the plan also includes a bit more controversial pieces. For example, an executive order saying federal agencies can't use woke AI which is kind of interesting, uh, whether you're here for it or not, that's not what this video is about, but I do wonder how that will affect bias when creating different AI models, if it's not something that these companies need to take into consideration. The other side of it too is with companies having a little lighter regulations on how quickly they're able to build AI and what how it is regulated, of course that will mean two things, one, faster automation, things will continue to grow faster and faster than they already are with companies being able to build at a quicker rate. Two, it's going to be very interesting how it's going to affect jobs because of how quickly automation is going to be coming. And I think this is going to be something that we really need to pay attention to and be aware of the challenge that this will bring for a lot of workers and a lot of jobs, because yes, it's going to create some amazing jobs, especially in the artificial intelligence world, things such as developers or AI engineers, but the products we are building, how will this affect others' roles? And it's happening so quickly that people aren't having as much time to adapt to it. Now it's not all doom and gloom, it's very exciting times and thinking about what these companies can build now with less regulations or fewer guardrails, I should say, is going to be really exciting. I mean, the US has really wanted to be ahead in the AI race for a while and between them and China, it's been a pretty tight race. So now with these regulations in place, but less guardrails, it'll be very interesting to see how quickly we can move and what that means. Okay, I have my phone here because I just wanted to really highlight the three main goals, make them very clear to you as to what they are from this uh, initiative that Trump did. One is speed up AI innovation by cutting different regulations out. Two is build more US data centers, even easing on environmental laws. Yeah, this is something we haven't touched on yet. So in part of these new easing up on regulations, this new mandate that he has put forward, there are, when more data centers are going to be built at a quicker pace, obviously that impacts the environment significantly. So when you are putting in place that these data centers are now being able to be built very quickly and have the resources to do so, the flip side of this is it is going to infect the environment and in the only way to build these data centers is to ease up on environmental regulations as well because they would be pushing against those with the amount of water used, amount of land used, energy, resources, etc. And number three is require federal AI systems to avoid, this is what we spoke about here, to avoid what the plan calls woke or ideologically biased outputs. So we covered that one. So anyways, top three, speed up AI, build more data centers, require AI systems to avoid woke language. Okay, the last thing I have in my notes from this is supporters are saying it's pro-innovation. Very excited, we're going to be building quicker than ever. It's great for US economy and the US companies. The critics are saying they are worrying about risks like bias, privacy, and environmental impact. And also I just wanna highlight here, I just shared the supporters and critics side of things. You can be both at the same time. You can be a supporter of AI being built faster and what this means, but also a critic. And I think that's important to keep in mind. I feel like nowadays we are all so, either black or white, one way or the other. And I truly believe that you can be somewhere in the middle, identify that this is a good thing on one hand, but also we need to be extraordinarily cautious on the other hand. I don't know, curious to get your take on that though. Coming in at number three is OpenAI gives ChatGPT agency. All right, let's talk about exactly what AI just dropped or OpenAI just dropped. You can tell I've had a few coffees here. So you know with ChatGPT, you have been able to get pretty good answers for a while now or brainstorming ideas, but now it can do things. What I mean by that is with the latest update, ChatGPT can access your calendar, browse the web, send emails, I mean, even run your code. It's basically like, giving it a goal, this agent a goal, such as plan a trip, and it figures out how to do the steps and just does it. Now, this is such a big deal. It really is a big shift because it moves ChatGPT from being a helpful tool to more like a digital assistant that can act on your behalf. So why is this such a big deal? Well, one, it's not just a chatbot anymore. We're really entering the era of agentic AI. AI that doesn't just respond to you, but makes decisions and actually takes actions. And I mean, that opens up a whole new category of tech. 
we're not just talking about faster productivity anymore. We're really talking about delegation. If ChatGPT becomes good enough to run errands, manage your schedule, or troubleshoot your code, run errands, <laughs> by running errands, I mean, you know, ordering different errands online, et cetera, let's be clear here. Uh, it really is the first wave we are seeing of AI coworkers in action. Now we've been talking about this for a while, these agentic AI, what this means, what this will look like. So to have it here on such a mass, massively used platform like ChatGPT, I'm very curious to how this will go. People have been using it. I've seen some demos online already and it's very fascinating the ways that people have been getting creative using it. Curious to hear, have you used it yet? And if so, what have you used it for? To be honest, I haven't really delve dove into it yet fully i've you know tinkered with it but it's still something that i need to really get into and explore so maybe we'll do a video on that soon okay this one just happened i think it happened in the last past 24 48 hours by the time you watch this video which is tesla's deal with samsung tesla's billion dollar deal i think it's 16 it is 16.5 billion dollar deal let's be clear here now this deal is to manufacture custom ai chips at a factory in texas now these chips will power tesla's full self-driving tech its optimus robots and its dojo ai training system so literally everything and the first batch is not even expected until 2027. So we have a year and about a year and a half for that. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, one, Tesla's not just making cars anymore and they haven't for a while. They're building chips, software, and training infrastructure to power an AI first future. And this really matters because it shows how the biggest tech companies are trying to control the full stack. I mean, the first thing we spoke about here today was Meta and how they're exa doing exactly that, just differently. I mean, when you think from the algorithms to the, the hardware. Now for Tesla, owning their own AI chips means optimizing for their exact needs. And they can do this faster, cheaper, and now more efficient. And for the rest of us, it shows that the AI race isn't just about the software or the code anymore. It's now getting into the hardware. So what exactly are people saying about this? Well, for one, industry watchers are saying this could really help Samsung catch up with a lot of their different competitors in the AI space. And it also gives Tesla more control over its own tech stack. But some people are skeptical that Samsung can deliver the volume and performance Tesla needs. Now, I'm sure Tesla has done their homework on this, but that's what skeptics are saying. But how does this affect us then? I mean, these chips could show up in the self-driving cars of the future or robots that help with logistics, labor, maybe in our homes. But it all depends on whether the tech actually delivers. I found this partnership really interesting. I'm very curious to see how it comes to fruition. I know we have a year and a half to see how this plays out. I'm sure tons will change before it even plays out. Just knowing, you know, Elon Musk loves to be Maybe he doesn't, maybe he does, but he's always in the news. So I'm sure there'll be more things to happen with this. The Samsung deal I think is a really big one. And I think it will be very interesting to see where it goes. But really what's threaded through, I mean, as I mentioned, the meta news this week, the Samsung and Tesla news this week, I would say those are the two main ones. It's tech companies, these big tech companies are really looking to take on more than just the software. We've seen this for a while. I mean, the meta announcement is all software related. For the most part, they have some hardware that they're, they're bringing out, obviously the glasses that have been around for a while, but they're really starting to want to push towards, not just meta, but a lot of these big tech com companies, controlling or having more, what's the right word? More grasp, if you will, more, <laughs> More, I don't know what the right word is here. More, I'm just gonna keep on going, we're gonna keep on rolling. More autonomy over different areas in tech. I think that's a good way of putting it. The software, the hardware, I mean, Tesla partnering with Samsung to make their own chips. The companies are looking to really take control as much as possible to build as fast as possible. I think it's a really interesting time to, to see how this all shakes out. I would say in the next year, but I think it's gonna be in the next few months even. All right, I hope you enjoyed this extremely candid uh, tech news video. I think there were some really big things that happened this week in tech that we really need to catch up on. I hope you found it valuable, helpful. Leave in the comments if you wanna do more tech news type videos. I try and keep it very candid and real, so when you leave this video, it's digestible and you really understand what is going on from a human level because there's not enough human interaction anymore. All right. Subscribe and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.